Hey love, what's up? Welcome to Confidently Uncomfortable. I'm your host, Jago, health and lifestyle coach and not so regal confidence queen. Coming at you with the real, the raw, and of course, the uncomfortable. My mission is to show you that to be confident, it has absolutely nothing to do with being perfect or having it all together and everything to do with you getting uncomfortable and pushing your limits. Thanks for joining me. Let's dive in. Welcome back to Confidently Uncomfortable with Jago. We are going to stay more true to that name than ever before in this episode. We are going to get uncomfortable. We are going to talk about race. We're going to talk about black men. We're going to talk about white women. We're going to talk about all the things that maybe you're not sure if you're ready to talk about. It's going to be talked about today. I'm going to be speaking from the heart. I'm not going to be speaking as someone that knows better or knows everything or is a specialist in racial injustice, but I am going to share what's been on my heart, what I've been feeling the need to share, and then I'm also going to um, have resources for you as far as how you can help as an ally. So I want to really jump in and talk more about everything going on. If you're watching this episode at a different time, hopefully you are on the other side and there has been amazing change and there is um, normalizing equality and everyone is so happy and that is what I am praying for every single day is just true equality because Black Lives Matter. So I'm going to share just some of the things that I have talked on, touched on, but in this space, like I really feel like I can dive deeper into it. You guys have been with me through a lot of different of experiences, my own background. You guys probably know me better than most because you're not just seeing small clips. You're really in it for the long haul with these podcast episodes. So I appreciate you being here today and I appreciate you leaning into your discomfort. So even if you're a little wary to dive into this, it's going to be okay. I will warn you that I'm taking a portion of an IGTV like this, basically me speaking to um, kind white women, and I do curse a lot. I say that I say the f word. So if you have kids, um, now would be the time to put your earphones in because it's not just a one time slip up. It happens multiple times, and I'm not going to take it out because I truly feel like that's just where my emotions are at. So I'm going to share just where I'm at as far as posting and being an influencer, if you want to call me that, and all of those things, and kind of where I've been, um, I'll share with you the message that I do want to share with white women, just to make sure that we are being an ally. And then at the end, I'm going to touch on just some response I got, um, just because I do believe that conversation is so important, and I want always there to be clarification. If you're ever offended or confused, freaking reach out to me. Let me know, because I would rather have a real conversation than, than you to just quit and not even try and dig deeper into this because a lot of times we're stuck in our own ego to where the second we feel offended or the second we feel like she's talking down to me I shut down I walk away and I want to challenge you not to do that because first of all it's not about you and second of all a lot of these things I'm talking about are referring to myself too I am no better than than you in, in the sense of like this change still needs to happen, right? So if I was if I was doing a hundred percent, it wouldn't necessarily still be here, right? As far as racism is concerned and every other kind of social injustice. But I'm gonna share kind of where I was at, what's been on my heart, and then we'll dive into what I would like to say to you. Um, if you are a white woman who feels like, hey, I'm a good person, I'm not racist, we'll kind of dig into what does that mean to be anti-racist. So let's start here. My heart breaks, but the idea of just sharing random articles or memes to my Instagram story or commenting, this has got to stop, does not feel right anymore. It hasn't worked before and it is not doing anything. We need to actually do something, especially if you are in a position of privilege, own up to that privilege and stop being complacent. I am wrecked. I'm angry. I have seen more outrage in white privileged communities over their civil right to not wear a mask in a grocery store or sit inside a restaurant. This was back during COVID, in case you're watching this later. But when there's blatant racism, murder, and cruelty going on to our black brothers and sisters, they say nothing. You act like all lives matter, but the truth is you still view your life and your rights above others. This is the exact opposite of what Jesus would do. An immigrant minority himself, Jesus would be less focused on the four walls of a church and more focused on being the church. 
often white evangelical Christians are out here picketing and protesting their rights to attend in-person church services that the government has taken from them for less than three months. But when people get together to protest the rights that have never been given to the black and people of color communities, they are tear gassed and completely dismissed as overreacting over an isolated circumstance. As a visibly white woman with privilege, I cannot speak about what it feels like, but I can tell you that as a white woman who sees the blatant racism that still exists, I cannot take it anymore, (sighs) y'all. My black brothers and sisters deserve to be angry without fear of being arrested or seen as a stereotype. How dare you stand there and protest your rights as an American during a global pandemic and not even bat an eye when you see true cruelty against human rights? I haven't been able to respond honestly because I wanted to allow space for my minorities to have the floor. I believe it is so important to lift up their voices and support them opposed to speaking out over them as if I understand. If your biggest fear is that you will never be able to walk into a grocery store again without a mask or that you would never be able to drink a Bud Light inside your favorite bar again, you need to check yourself. Your actions speak a lot louder about who you really value in this world. I'm not saying that your human rights are not important. I'm not saying that. Everyone matters. Every single human matters. You matter. But until you value the importance of Black Lives Matter, there will never be true equality and freedom in America. Listen, to all my non-white friends, my family, my clients, and my neighbors, I see you and I hear you. I want to be more actively engaged, but I know I still have so many blind spots and I will continue to grow. You matter. Your lives matter. White people, we need to do more. Now I'm going to share what I spoke about in my IGTV. If you heard this, what I just spoke on, and you're like agreeing with me, or you um, can definitely see the separation there when it comes to protesting and, and wanting human rights. That is what we're looking for, human rights for black men and women, because it's not evident in the, the way things are working now in our justice system and in all systems that are that are in America. If that offended you, I want you to look deep inside yourself. I told you it was going to get uncomfortable. Um, If you decide not to listen or follow me anymore, I get it. If you want to share this to someone who maybe needs to be reminded of this, do it. But what I'm going to share next um, might be a little more uncomfortable because you might have heard this first part and said, yes, I agree with that. Like, I am not racist. This is great. And the truth is, as white women, who is my typical person listening to this, possibly we all can have do have racism that we're brought up with it is not necessarily something we are consciously doing sometimes it is sometimes it isn't oftentimes you are just thinking that that is the norm oftentimes you're thinking oh it's just a generational thing oh it's just my crazy uncle oh it's just my crazy old grandpa from the war or whatever and um we can't just keep doing that and letting that slide and also now just being not racist isn't enough it's never been enough but it's now more than ever I'm realizing that just because I know I don't have hate for any other race that doesn't mean that there aren't subconscious things that are happening there doesn't mean I'm still not profiting off of a system that is geared more towards white people And so learning to accept that's really important. I'm going to give you some great resources to educate yourself. And I'm also going to talk to you a little bit more about if you feel like, well, I'm not racist, but I'm really kind. What does that mean? Does that mean that you it stops there? I don't know. So listen to this next clip. Um, Again, it is explicit. So watch your watch yourself. Put your earphones in. Okay, listen, um. I have to talk and if my um if my black men and women feel like they want me to to shut it down and not talk about this feel free to comment and tell me listen don't talk about anything this week but I just don't think that it should be posting a black square and then feeling like you're done so I'm gonna really call um 
the energy that this is going out to especially is going to be white women. So if you are a white female, you need to listen to this. If you are a black man or woman, I want to tell you that you're loved. I see you and I want you to take care of yourself today, whatever that means. If that means you need to go into the sun, walk, like be out in the sun and listen to music or just take a second to breathe through yourself, you need to fuel, fuel your body while you're fueling this change. So um, don't put it all on you. Okay, so I'm going to take a little bit of it today. I know I'm not taking anything of it, but I just wanted to say that you're, you're loved and I'm here for you. Black men and women, take care of yourselves. Do whatever you can to stay healthy. White women, listen up. Okay, I've seen people talking about signing petitions. And so I'm going to even speak on this a little bit. Earlier in the week, I'm talking like, okay, make sure you donate, make sure you sign petitions. But at that point, I had only signed the George Floyd petition, right? I had only signed the one, the, it was like one of the biggest change.org positions with um, George Floyd and getting like the, the cops persecuted. And if you haven't seen in the news, that's <clears throat> steps towards it, upgrading the murder, all of the cops being like, that's amazing, but it doesn't stop there. So if you t- look at the link in my bio under petitions, there you can click on them. And there are, I, th- I don't know how many I signed yesterday. I, I could go back and count, but I'm not trying to, to brag about that because it's bullshit. But this, it was like hundreds, y'all, hundreds of peti- petitions. And what I would recommend if you're like, oh, well, I signed the petition Listen, it's not singular. It's, it's multiple. So I want to challenge you to copy the link of, of those petitions onto your, your actual desktop screen and pull up, pull up multiple tabs and don't just sign them without, without reading them. It's hard because you're going to be able to see what people, what black men and women have to see every single day, but you need to see it. You need to see that there are all these cases that are happening. All of these, I, I'm talking about black men a lot today too, because I'll get into that a little bit more, but they just have a, a, a soft spot on my heart. And when you start reading those stories of people that are being wrongly convicted for murder, wrongly convicted for all these things, like you'll see that that this is a problem. This is not just about George Floyd. Rest in peace. Yes, he's a big he's a big turning point. But you need to see that this is not just like coming out of nowhere. This has always been. And I don't want you to feel bad for asking questions. Do not ask your black friends questions. But if you want to ask, like reach out to me in the DMs, I would, I would rather you ask the questions than just say, I'm just going to sit out of this one. Um, something that really hit me, I grew up, um, having a lot of black friends. I was on a step team, all this stuff, but that's not to show you like, Oh, like I've totally, I'm so woke. Like, fuck that. I'm not going to act like that. We all have room to grow. So don't think just because you did sign petitions, just because you did all these different things that you're like, okay, I'm, I'm a kind white female and I've done all the things and now I'm done. Now I can go back to my regular life. (sighs) Think of it like someone is crying out and asking for your help and your support. They are saying, We need you to see us and not just today, not just on Blackout Tuesday. We need you to keep seeing us and fighting for us every single day. That is what you need to be like when you're going into this. And you need to drop your ego. That is the other thing. I am seeing on here so many, it's it's white women, so many white women that are so hurt. But the reason that they're upset and hurt is because they're, they're bringing it back to themselves. They're upset that they're being treat they're being called out for their whiteness they're being called out for their ignorance and instead fucking own it yes you are ignorant no matter where you're at on your journey with becoming anti-racist you still have room to grow i still have room to cr- grow so instead of getting caught in this thing of like maybe you're looking at other people that that cuz i've seen all i'm seeing all these coaches i'm seeing all these people that they posted the black square and now they're posting their selfie and their breakfast and it it sickens me. It makes me so physically ill. But here's the thing. Is it helping me to, to lift myself up as some, some like white savior to be like, Oh, they're doing, they're not doing what they should be doing. They're not talking about their petitions. They didn't post in their story like that. It's not about comparing about how woke you are. It's not about how lifting you. This is not about you, white women. It is not about you. Okay. So instead of comparing to what other people aren't doing, call them out, go into their DMs or call them out in public and, and say, listen, this isn't the time right now. I've had to have some tough conversations, y'all, with family, 
family. <laughs> and, and instead of saying, well, oh, people are old, like they'll understand, like, no, stop giving people excuses to be so ignorant. But then also, um, actually, Jess, you made a really good point of saying people that are trying don't put them down. Like, oh, you're coming into the game late. Y'all, if you're coming to the game yesterday, you're late. You've been late. We're hundreds of years late. So don't think that you're better than someone because you, you talked about it a week ago. Like, yeah, so what? I did. Who cares? Get over your ego. Drop your fucking ego. That is the problem with white women. We have such big egos. And then, I don't know, like, I could give you sources on that as far as like how white feminism can sometimes really be the biggest obstacle for making change, but I'm not going to. So when it comes to petitions, actually go in and sign them, read them and absorb it. Okay. Drop your ego. When it comes to donating to black owned and led organizations. So think back, how many things have you shared in the past couple of days? A lot, right? You've shared a lot of different things and you're like, here, I'm going to share these black owned businesses. I'm going to do all these things. Sharing is not where it stops. Okay. It's helpful. I love when you guys say, thanks for sharing that, but what am I doing behind the scenes? That's, that's what I had to, to, to do with myself yesterday is like, I have shared about this. There's so much information out there. Thank God. Thank the people that, that, I mean, there are so many black women that are still educating us and answering our questions when that is not their responsibility and they should be paid for their time just for the record. So please message them and ask them for their Venmo or their PayPal so you can message them. But When it comes to those things you're sharing, well, what are you doing? What are the actions behind it? So I want to challenge you to look back at the things that you've been posting. Look back at what you've been doing and what can you personally do? And then think, okay, now I've done it. Now, who is a white person in my life that I know is not doing this? Those are the people that need to be to talk to. Those are the people that are discussing. That's why yesterday I posted about the hashtags and I talked about like, Everyone said not to do Black Lives Matter. Yes. But then also what hashtags can you use instead? And you can use ones that are in this algorithm. They're in a bubble right now where they haven't maybe seen anything. Like you personally might be seeing all of the things that need to happen, all of the, everything that's going on with the protests. But there are people out there right now, all they're seeing is their, their like puppy dog hashtags that they're following and their beach photos because they're at the beach and vacationing. And, and I'm not saying life has to stop, but I'm saying that you need to be aware be more aware and be more persistent in becoming more aware. Okay. So have, once you've done something, go have a tough conversation with someone. Um, this is hard, right? Tough conversations. It sucks, but guess what? Your, your heart is not as hard as the other, the black men and women that have having, having to go through this for so long and also having to feel like they've had to be silenced for so long and not speak up. Why do you think there is so much passion behind these videos you're watching? I've watched so many black women just there is so much passion and emotion behind that. And it's so amazing. But then recognizing that has been bottled up for their entire life. Think about that. Their entire life, they've been having to keep in that those feelings and emotion. Imagine that just for like that much. And then you can make a change with this. Okay. Even with it, when it's uncomfortable, my grandparents, bless their soul. I love them so much. They're watching the news because that's what that's what old white people do, right? They're watching the news and they were like, why are there so many white arms out there at the petition? Why are there white people out here? I don't understand. They they literally, they think, oh, like this is just like only black people need to be out here, which is the complete opposite. So if you were at a women's march, you need to get out there now. Like if you were like even talking about this, you need to do it. And I've, this is me too. I'm in Hickory, North Carolina. And I'm like, look, trying to find what can I do here? What, where do I need to drive? Um, so I'm challenging you to do more. It's never enough and it's not going to stop. This isn't just like a week long thing. Another thing I posted was about books by black authors and thought leaders. I think just doing an audit with your life and listen, there's going to be guilt that comes up, but you need to put that away and start making change, but just recognizing, oh, wow. Like all my friends are white. Oh, wow. Like I, I really need to work on, on learning more about this. I grew up not even thinking about this outside of what I learned in my social studies class, which is nothing by the way, when it comes to black history. Um, now I want to talk about as a white woman, I want to talk about black men. Black men are some of the most poetic and artistic and deep individuals in the world, in the world. They are, but our bias the way we've been brought up, tries to make us think otherwise. And it's so 
wrong. Sucks, that's guilt, right? But that's the thing is you need to see beyond that because that is where you can actually grow. And so I let me tell you a little bit about me, not personally, just my background so you know where I'm coming from. So my stepfather is black and um, I saw things growing up that were just different that I didn't understand fully. So I would notice like when we would be in stores that when I was in stores with my mom, my white mom, like no one ever really bothered us when I was in stores with my, with my stepdad, we would always get followed or we would go somewhere like into an elevator and you would see a white woman, typically white woman, grab her purse a little bit closer or switch the side of the street. Or, um, he was a pastor, youth pastor growing up. And no matter where he was in, in a church, in typically an all white church, after he would talk, not just one person, multiple people would come up to him and say, you talk so well. And Preston Smiles, I posted about him earlier. He actually made a post about this, about like the talking well. And that is like the most ignorant thing you could say. Basically it's saying like, oh, well, I'm surprised you're so, in- you're, you're so um, able to speak so well, which is just complete bullshit. So, um, Little things like that, that you're, someone might be like, oh, well, that was a compliment. You said you were talking so well. No, it's not. So recognizing that maybe you didn't realize some of the things you're saying that might be compliments or might be supportive or not. La Marad, I also posted about him. He has the, the story time book that he just did. He um, talks about interacting with white women. And he talked about having to be kind to just survive. And this is something that it's so sad and it's so true. Like having to put on a face, like imagine leaving like work when you had a really crappy day and you're walking home from work and you're so pissed and you're so angry, but then having to cover up any kind of emotions that you have, knowing that if you come off as an angry black person, that, that someone could arrest you or hurt you in any way. And so the survival was to be kind to survive. And I even noticed this with like the idea of taking up space. So whenever like you pass like a white man, this happens a lot. Again, never take anything I say. Like I'm, I know everything. I'm just talking about my personal experiences and going beyond that and asking you to do more. But basically walking by like a white man will always try and like look at me or try and say something or like whatever kind of thing like that. Cause they feel like the world revolves around them. So they can say that with, with no consequences. Whereas when typically when I pack, pass a white, a black male, if I'm by myself, they will look down. They'll look down out of respect or they'll smile, depending on who the person is, typically if they're younger. And again, that's a survival. They need to make sure that, hey, this is, it's like a, um, a non-threatening move to, to drop your head like that, okay? And that's something they're taught and they're brought up their entire lives. And we don't even freaking think about it. So we need to think more. We need to do more. Um, I think the next step is the tough conversations that you need to have and then asking yourself, okay, one week from now, what can I continue to be doing? How can I continue to help? This isn't over. So do not think that just because you posted a black square yesterday that that this is the end, Okay. Black men and women need us. They've been needed us. So um, consider that when you're making your decisions and your choices with the things that you're posting right now. That's all I'm going to say because people are hurting right now. And then to see someone posting just like, what a beautiful, what a, what amazing day. I have the best life ever. And then, I mean, I know that there's always going to be bad in the world, but People are asking for our help and support and it looks like the complete opposite slap in the face. Like, oh, I've done my job and I'm done. So we need to do more. I'm going to continue to challenge myself to do more. Don't make assumptions about people if they are like, oh, they didn't, they didn't post about donating. They didn't post about marching. They didn't post about doing that. Don't make assumptions. You need to check yourself first. I'm going to say that and then check your friends, check your family and really challenge them to do more. That's all I'm going to say. Um, again, if anyone feels like this is taking up space and you want me to delete it from here, I will be happy to, but I just want to know, I want black women and men, girls and boys to know that I'm here. I'm continuing to listen. I'm opening to learn and I'm willing to speak and, and, and be called out for, for doing something wrong. I would rather speak and you got, and, and, and people tell me you've got that wrong. We got to take a different approach than to not talk at all. I don't think the idea of just not talking and avoiding that just feels like avoidance to me. So I just doesn't feel right. So 
<laughs> Thank you so much. I appreciate it. But seriously, I'm, I'm, I'm so thankful for you guys. It's not a competition. If you watched any of this and you're a white woman and you want to have a conversation with me, reach out to me because I want to give my energy into this as much as I can. Um, and I want there to be growth. I want there to be real, real, real conversations and, and more than just sharing stuff. And it's not bad to share things. Again, I'm not judging you for how you are choosing to support, but I know that we can all, wherever we're at, we can all do more, right? We can all do more. I love you. I love you, man. I love you, Jess. Love you, Erica. Thank you guys so much for listening. Um, reach out to me messaging if you need to. Awesome. So <clears throat> like I said, it's not a competition. So I, I mean, I can relate to this because like sometimes you're getting so frustrated and you're like, I feel like I'm, I'm trying to do all the things, but then I'm seeing other people not doing the things. And, and instead of getting angry or competing or even trying to give yourself a cookie in my way, like, like, oh, well, I did all these things. Like it's still not enough. And it's not something where we should expect like someone to say thank you, especially black, white, black men and women right now to thank us for speaking out or to expect a cookie when we are like doing all of these things and really making more of an effort to educate ourselves, to donate, to connect, to listen. Those things just need to happen. So don't feel like you need to be praised for it. Okay. That's just, it's something that's just a part of human decency that we need to, to ingrain in who we are so that our next generation, that will just be a part of them. Oh, I'm, it, I have so much hope for the next generation, y'all. I really do. But when it comes to making these changes, again, don't compare yourself. Um, we're all late in the game, like I said. So even if you're like, oh, well, I've, someone's just now posting about it. I mean, you can sniff out the BS versus the real genuine like response. So I would rather... I've spoke to a lot of women, a lot of black women, and they said that they would rather you. And again, this is not speaking for everyone. Don't assume that one black woman is speaking for all. But the ones that I have spoke to, spoken to have said that they would rather you speak out than be silent and magnify their voices as well. And so instead of being afraid of saying anything, because you're like, what if I say the wrong thing? You probably will. We're all going to. Like, there are things that that I've even, re even recognized in my own practice. Um, there's things I've seen all around that maybe I should have addressed sooner or addressed in a deeper way, not just kind of said, stop that, but really like said, listen, this is why this cannot happen. And, and, um, I think education is going to be a huge part of in the future when it comes to making sure this continues. The other thing about posting, I talked about just sharing things and, I do think the spread of information is so awesome and so helpful. I do think the donations are very helpful. That's why I'm going to be posting about them. Petitions are so important. Voting is so important. And the other thing with that is think about on Instagram, there's still a generation that is not even on Instagram, right? There are our uncles and our our grandparents or our friends that we might that might have not said anything or whoever that is. And so that is the step that maybe you've been holding back on, right? Those tough conversations. You're like, well, I'm not going to see them till Christmas. Well, maybe you need to, to reach out to them and just say, hey, I want to reach out because I'm really passionate about, about this, this movement and I want it to propel and I wanted to have a com real conversation with you. Basically, I shared, she shared, made a really great graphic on how to respond to common racist, racist statements, waste free Marie. Um, Waste Free Marie. She's a blogger, but it's a real. She has some really great re resources. I would definitely find out her Venmo and pay her um, for that resource. I highly recommend you look at it because it's just something to have on hand. We need to arm ourselves and equip ourselves with with the knowledge to have these tough conversations. We need to get uncomfortable. We need to be okay with being wrong because most of the things we're gonna do might be wrong at first and um, educate ourselves. So I do want to address some people reached out to me after the IGTV video just a little confused so I wanted to make sure I gave clarification and I did open up for questions so I wanted you to come and ask me questions and I'm glad for those of the ones that did um, it was awesome because we were able to have a real conversation so um, one of the someone reached out to me again I'm not going to say any names of anyone because I, I wanted them to feel like they could ask me anything but they said that they were a little confused um, when I said we shouldn't ask our black friends questions, we should they should ask me. And so 
basically the understanding there, and again, I was speaking off the cuff, so it wasn't, it, it came off as like, don't talk to black, don't talk to black people at all, only talk to me because I'm the knowledgeable one. Heck no. What I mean by that is right now, a lot of us are experiencing white guilt and it's making us emotional and it's making us just feel like sad and, and guilty all the time. And, and the thing is, is that guilt and that those tears aren't helping black men and women, your friends that you want to reach out to and check in on, like, that is not necessarily what they need of you asking them like, well, can you tell me all about racism? Can you tell like, they're not your Google. They're not your history major. They're not right now a lot like so many men and women are exhausted. They've been exhausted. So to put that on them is almost like a privileged move as well. It's like you expect them like, oh, teach me. And, and it might have been in the kindest way to do that. But because you want to connect with your friends. But I would say if it's, especially if it's someone that you just follow on, on social media, please do not inundate their emails and their I, their direct messages with things like that, because they're already getting so many things. And a lot of them are things that you could Google and educate yourself on. A lot of amazing black creators have been posting informational videos and resources and just all the things. So, so instead of expecting like this catered service for being educated on all of the systemic racism and everything that's been going on for hundreds and hundreds of years let's let's think like i it would be more beneficial to save their energy and you focus your energy towards ed- educating yourself okay now that doesn't mean that you can't have conversations with your black friends like that's not the case at all absolutely connect with them make sure they feel loved and seen and heard but i just don't want you to overwhelm them so what i w- meant by that statement was do not just randomly dm your two like your black friend or black person that you follow just because you want clarification or that you want to get rid of some of the guilt that you're feeling right now or that you just have a question about something that they said um because they're getting so m- they're getting so many things right now from what I'm what the response that I'm hearing so just knowing that it's okay to want to have a dialogue but I think just making sure you're doing it in the right time and place everything out of love but I'm just letting you know that that is that's kind of the way to go with that but I did not mean like, oh, talk to me. I know everything. No, I just meant that it's okay to have questions. It's okay to be curious. It's okay to to be a little confused or or whatever when you are working towards educating yourself. But um, so I wanted there to be an open dialogue because I think that that is so important because it can be really easy to make assumptions. Like with my video, um, people assume, can assume that I mean one thing when I don't mean that at all. Um, another thing I had a question on was the hashtag. So I talked about using different hashtags outside of the Black Lives Matter hashtag. And the reason behind that, again, is to help people see this that aren't necessarily looking for this information and maybe even avoiding it. And it is not out of hate for any any kind of person. It's not out of hate for the police. It's not out of hate for um, Republicans or anything like that. It's truly just because the way that the internet is set up right now, whatever you want to believe to be true is true. Because your the way algorithms work the way that we follow people like all the information gets really carved out and catered for our belief system and so that is something that can be really toxic for change because you get really stuck in your ways and then everything you're seeing is backing up those beliefs so the reason that I want you to reach out to people is because you might think, well, there's everyone's seeing everything and I'm, I've posted so many times, but have those people that really need to see it, do you think they've really seen it? Do you think they've heard it? Do you think they've had someone close to them have the real conversation? And that is the tough conversation, the next steps that I need to take. I've started it with a few of my closer people in my life, but I know that it still needs to happen. So continue this. Continue to listen. Continue to learn because it almost makes me sad but totally understandable that so many, I've seen so many black men and women reaching out and saying thank you for wanting to be an ally but I want you to to be there for me a week from now, a month from now, years from now, again and again and again because it's not just this one and done. It's not just this posting like I'm not racist black, black square and then I'm done and nothing wrong with the black square you everyone has their own opinion about that but i'm just saying recognizing that but then the, the fact that there's already a doubt 
that it's going to last, whew, come on, we can do it. We can do better. Okay. We can make this a marathon. It's not a sprint. Another thing, <laughs> sorry, this is a little long, y'all, but I'm going to just get on, get, talk about something. <sighs> Man, I get that I am a fitness body image. That's my, my brand, right? It's all about body image and confidence. But here's the thing to talk about confidence in ourselves, self-love, confidence in our bodies, all of those things. Racism is a huge part of that. Race is a huge part of that because you know how I talk about society. I'm going to give you guys this and, and then we'll leave it here because I want it to be something you think about. I've talked about in episodes about society telling us um, as women we have to be a certain size, right? So it's like, we have to be a certain size. You have to be fit. You have to have like, it, it just completely changes. You need to look a certain way. Um, don't be too loud. Don't talk. Yes, women do experience that. Black women experience that on an even, even more astronomical level. And every single day, it happens all the time from the day that they're born. And black women are beautiful. And they deserve to feel that way. So if, if you've ever felt society make you feel small, make you feel like you weren't enough, that is on a very even more <laughs> bigger level. So just think about that feeling that you felt and then expand it <laughs> by about hundreds of thousands because it's every single day. It's so often it happens all the time to where they're not feeling enough. Black women have been told that their whole lives. They're not enough. And then they're seeing, <sighs> I don't want to get on a rant, so I'm going to stay away from that. But as far as like they're, they're, they're re being recognized as being beautiful, but then people are taking away what makes them beautiful and trying to take it as their own. And, and I just want you to see that if you've ever been made to feel small, that happens so much in the black community with so many people that they're meeting in their daily life they have to think about it all the time think about the exhaustion you feel about thinking about your body right you've talked about it it takes up so much of your time it's so exhausting well that exhaustion is every single day and it's fear for your life being black in america so speaking about positivity and confidence like this is just as important, if not more, because we can't have those things without raising up black men and women to have that confidence to be able to walk around and truly, truly have equality because it's not there yet. We're not there yet. We're, we're not there yet, but we're working towards it. And I just don't want this to be a thing that just ends. I'm not saying that I'm going to be completely like, I'm never going to talk about body positivity again. No, that's not the case. But I want you to know where I stand. And I want you to stand with me. And I want you to stand with all the black men and women who are asking for our allyship and for our support and for us to give them a platform to speak on. Lift them up. That's what I'm asking. So thank you for listening to this episode. All the feels, but I did not want to <laughs> waste any more of your time with my tears. But we are working towards change. I do believe in hope. I do believe that God has put all of these crazy, crazy timed things into this exact moment for a reason. Like COVID-19, people working from home, everything that's happened. I mean, unfortunately with George Floyd's death, but that being that the, the critical event that is just catapulting and bringing this into the front lines of of what needs to change. And so I am praying, and I hope you pray too, that this continues to just create the positive impact in the movement that we're looking for. And I believe that we are going to be able to normalize equality. I have to believe that. So do whatever you can. Look at the resources that I've left and do something today. Do something today, even if it's just smiling at someone that doesn't look like you. That can be a first step. Okay. I will see you guys next time. Have a good one. Thanks again for listening to Confidently Uncomfortable. I love being able to connect with you here and honestly don't want it to end. So head over to my Facebook group, Body Confident Blueprint, and be sure to follow me on Insta at JagoFitLife. 
Also, if you're ready to get real confidently uncomfortable, go leave this podcast a five-star review and email me the review screenshot support at jagofit360.com for a chance to win a free 30-minute fitness audit and goal-setting session. I appreciate your support. See you next time.